a bit of a preface. This project was supposed to be a small, fun exercise in batch painting, something that I could use to get better at editing and throw out over winter break between semesters. And that didn't happen. The scope of this project ended up spiraling way out of control. What was going to be a batch painting exercise of just about 40-ish minis turned up into a large-scale project involving massive amounts of kit bashing, batch painting, terrain building, and all kinds of other stuff with sharpened sticks and war paint. So... Here's how this went down. Recently for Christmas, I was gifted this massive set of army painter war paints. I gotta say, it's got a lot of really cool bells and whistles. Almost 60 paints, some of which are actually direct matches to the primers that they sell as well. Really, really useful. If only I had some type of large-scale project I could use them on. And just as it happens, I came into possession of this large set of bandits from this Horizon Zero Dawn board game. However, there's a lot of them. A lot of them. So I figured now would be a golden opportunity to really get better at batch painting, something I've always kind of struggled at. 43 miniatures in a single project. To start off, I put the minis in hot water, and doing this allowed me to re-bend any weapons that might have been bent out of shape. I then immediately dunked them into cold water to help seal in any changes I'd made. I then had to go back and fix any mold lines, and the next step was going to be basing them. Using a little bit of PVA glue, I smoothed it out with a texture tool, and then put the minis in a bit of sand. This would give them a lot of really nice natural texture for their bases and really sell the real effect underneath them. For a few of them, I ended up putting a bit of this texture paste down to get a bit more of a pizzazz and extra effect to them to get some of them to stand out in the crowd. Lastly, with a solid gray primer, they were all looking very solid and ready to start painting. Now, the board game came with some fun reference cards. I decided to use them as a blueprint and reference to go off of where I would base my color scheme. Now, it took a few attempts. I really wanted to make sure to nail in what kind of scheme I was going for before I started to patch paint them on a wide scale. However, once I finally found a scheme that I was comfortable with, I decided to move on with the large scale painting. I started by giving them all a dark brown base coat. With batch painting, you paint each step on all your minis at the same time, as opposed to each mini individually. This will actually increase your efficiency overall. Another cool thing about batch painting is that once you're done with one mini, you can pop it off and start painting on the next mini. By the time you're done painting the entire set, they should be dry by now, and you can already move on to the next step, allowing for faster painting. I also recommend going for a bigger brush. Efficiency and speed is the name of the game, not necessarily amazing detail. I then went for a dark blue color to get more of a dark gothic cloth type of color. Next, I mixed a bunch of tan and that dark blue to create a muted, almost greenish khaki color to create a nice weathered canvas that really, really shined and added some grimy yet also warm color to the minis. Moving on, I added my flesh tones. As you can see, painting the entire set of 40 minis can get a little tedious. Powering through, I moved on to our matte white for our scavenged machine armor, and a bit of silver and purple for some of the weapon and cloth highlights. I added a desert-like marsh mud color for all the bases. Lastly, I used a DIY dip wash to really shade all the paints together. While at first I was dipping them, I ended up having a lot more success with just painting the wash onto the minis instead. Working in sets of six, I had the first chunk done, but had a lot more to go. Instead of more footage of the batch painting process, I'll show you how I painted one of the special characters, Nil, that came in the box. I started with a solid red base coat, really to give some bright color, to give him some contrast to the bandits. Next, I added a flesh tone to really show off those rock hard abs that were molded onto the miniature itself. Then, I went in with a flesh tone to make sure we got some solid highlights and definition on those rock-solid abs, as well as his hands and face. 
Then, with a dark brown color, I added some details onto the cloth and straps onto the lower boots and onto the vest. I went in with a red wash to really give some more color to his head crest and to his robes. Adding some white for his machine part armor on his thighs and his pauldrons. Adding some yellow highlights onto the edges of his armor and vest. And I diluted some Nuln oil to give a nice subtle wash color to his armor using a homemade medium. I then added some more white to his weapon. And lastly, I put the same desert yellow color onto the base of the mini. Lastly, I added a bit of super glue and one of my favorite tricks, miniature grass tufts to really give some life to this mini. I even went so far as to go back and put little of these same grass tufts onto the entire set of bandit minis as a whole, so they really had some life to them. Lastly, I painted the rim black, a uniform standard on all of my miniatures. And with that, an entire set of miniatures was complete. I was feeling pretty excited about myself as I had a really good looking ensemble of figures that really turned out well. And I must say, it was pretty satisfying to see them all get put back into the box, fully painted. Now, that's where this should have ended. You might have noticed the board that has been sitting in the back in some of these shots. These weird red lines that are supposed to denote the walls of this bandit camp really just didn't sit right with me. They felt flat and just really uninteresting. A while ago, for the same board game, I made the zipline piece, and even though it was a simple cosmetic item, it gave so much life to the board that I really just couldn't let go of, so I decided to fix it. Starting with some off-cut and random sprue bits I had lying around, I assembled them into frames, cutting off the excess and gluing them together into frames. Once I was done with these frames, I glued them together to create a more solid foundation for what I was going to accomplish. I used hot glue and super glue to varying results. Once I was done, I had a solid foundation to continue. And you can see, because of my measurements, it fit perfectly on the board where it needed to. Although it wasn't the most stable, I took some plastic card and glued it to the corners to give it a bit more rigidity and strength. Then I went outside. I found literally random sticks off the ground. The more natural, the better. After sawing, cutting them up, and just generally breaking them down into a more usable size, I had a massive stockpile ready to make an epic bandit fort. Now it was a matter of just hot gluing to the frame that I'd created. And of course, I couldn't pass up the chance for some epic time-lapse footage. To fill out the interior, I used a mixture of black craft paint and coffee grounds of all things to create a scale model mud effect that would dry in really unique and interesting ways to sell that mud and stick slapped together look that bandit camps usually have. I then used a texture tool to smear it all over the place and get it deep into the walls and cracks and crevices. For some of the middle pieces, I ended up using some green stuff and more plastic card to get more destroyed crumbling ruins. I cut up these extra little pieces and then glued them on to create a cool brick effect. Adding some more sticks for flavor, they really started to come together. And voila, with a coat of gray spray primer, it all started coming together and looked wonderful. I then used some cheap gray and brown craft paint and I mixed it together to create a dark and almost edgy wood-like effect. If wood could look evil, I guess, I think it can. 
I used a large brush to get the bulk of the fort, but I went back with a slightly smaller dry brush to get in some of the deeper crevices. I used just a solid brown to paint the inside mud of the fort to make sure it sanded out from the wood grain color. And I stepped on this purple, the same purple I used on the miniatures. It almost ended up looking like crusted old dried war paint that these bandits have thrown upon the fort. I next went in with that same DIY dip wash and painted it all over to highlight all the details. Even now, it's already starting to come to life and look like a real bandit fort. For the stone pieces, I stippled on various shades of gray to get a nice crumbling weathered effect. More brown, and even a little bit of that purple before to look like more simulated war paint. I painted up some more of the dirt, gave it a solid coat of wash, and I ended up dry brushing the inside of the fort too to give it a little bit more texture and character. I re-upped more war paint on it to give it more of a highlight color. I added another dry brush of gray to make sure the stone didn't look too much like the wood, but both looked like they fit together in the same camp. Same color palette, but different materials. I gave another coat of wash to the inside of the fort to kind of darken down a bit of the dry brushed highlights. Lastly came the most tedious part. With needle and thread, I then weaved it in and out between all the logs to look like it had been rope used to cinch down this entire fort together. In the end, it really started to look like something that had been ramshackled, thrown together, and cinched down in haste. Unfortunately, it left a lot of these really weird and kind of bizarre pink stitches in the mud. So, calling again upon our favorite dip wash here, I used that to darken down and stain the string. Lastly, I added more of our favorite grass tufts to give more life. Now, with all the hard work done, I think it's time for some epic glamour shots with appropriately epic and edgy music. So yeah, that was this whole great bandit adventure. What started out as a small molehill, I eventually turned into a massive mountain. I will say that the DIY dip wash and a bit of that medium that I used were all courtesy of Midwinter Minis. I'll leave a link in the description. And thank you very much for watching. See you around.